Hi there, you're watching the companion video to the excellent tutorial Rebirth of the Cool, Creating Responsive SVG Image Maps with Transition Effects by Dudley Story. My name is Dan Wellman and today we'll be working with the SVG image format and looking at things like SVG editors, Xlink and masking. You should have some experience with HTML and CSS, and it's recommended that you have access to a vector illustration tool like Adobe Illustrator or the open source Inkscape. We'll be working with a map of Canada, so let's download that first of all. We can get that from Wikipedia, and this is the image that we'll be working with. So let's just hit the full res link down here, and then we can save a copy of this. We'll save it to the desktop for now. And let's just create a basic working folder. So we'll just call this folder Canada. And then what we want to do is just open up the map in a vector illustration tool. Actually, we can choose Inkscape. So first of all, we want to simplify the image so that it shows just the Western provinces. So if you're used to Photoshop or some other bitmap editing tool, you'll probably be wondering where the crop tool is in the vector program that you're using. Well, generally when we're working with SVG, we don't crop. Instead, we can mask out different parts of the image, leaving only what we want. What we'll do today is just select the bits of the map that we want to work with and copy them into a new document. So we can select the three provinces using the edit path tool, and that's this tool. And then we can hold down the shift key to select multiple things. So let's just select the three Western provinces, and then we right click and choose copy. And now let's create a new file and we'll just paste those directly in. Okay, so let's just get rid of this one. And what we want to do now is just shrink the canvas down a bit so that it's just big enough to hold our image. And that will avoid having a lot of white space around the image when we come to look at it in a browser. So in Inkscape, we can do this by going to file and then document properties. And there's a link down here that says resize page to content. We want to click that. And then we want to click the resize page to drawing or selection button. And that should have shrunk down the canvas. So when I close this, we can see that the canvas is only big enough to hold the three Western provinces that we'll be working with. Great. So let's save the image out. If you're using Inkscape, what you want to do is choose the save as type. And the type that we want is optimized SVG. If we don't choose this format, then Inkscape will add a ton of unnecessary junk to the code. It still does this with optimized SVG, but nowhere near as much. So let's put this into the folder that we just created and we'll just call it uh, Canada. So when we hit the save button, what we'll get is an output dialog box here. And because I've used Inkscape before, it's remembered my previous selections, but generally the selections that we want to choose in this window are the view boxing. We definitely want that. The strip XML prologue. We don't need the XML prologue, so we can get rid of it here. Um, and we can strip out any unnecessary IDs with the enable ID stripping. So those are probably the most important options. So let's click OK, and that should now be saved. So we can now open it up in a text editor and there's still some junk that we need to remove, but there's not very much, so we can do that by hand. So the first thing that we wanna get rid of is this comment at the top here. And we can also get rid of all this metadata. We don't need this. And now that we've gotten rid of the metadata, there's a bunch of namespaces that we can remove as well. So let's get rid of the RDF one. Don't want that. We don't want the CC or the DC namespaces either. So let's get rid of those. And let's just tidy things up slightly. So all that we should be left with is the root SVG element, a G element, which is a group, and three paths. So let's save that, and let's just check that it's still working as it should do. We can open it up in a browser, and if the browser displays the image, then everything is working as it should do. Okay, so it looks good. Here's our three Western provinces, and let's just go back to the code. So the first thing that we want to do is to link up the shapes. And to do that, we'll need to add the Xlink namespace to the root SVG element. So let's do that first of all. All right, that should be it. Links in SVG are almost identical to links in HTML. We just need to add the Xlink namespace to them when we're adding the hrefs. So they should wrap each of the three paths inside the group. So to add the href attributes, we just need to prefix it with Xlink. And we're just going to link to some simple travel websites for each of the three provinces. Okay, so let's go back to the browser and just check that everything is working as it should do. 
So these now link, and one of the main benefits of SVG, I'll just resize my browser window, and what should happen is that the SVG image should shrink and grow according to the size of the browser, and as you can see it does. So right now we're just viewing the raw SVG file in our browser directly, it's not actually part of any web page. So let's just embed it in a web page, and I'll just open up a different editor now. And let's just create a new HTML page. And what we want to do is just go back to the text editor. We can select all of this and just dump it straight into the body of the page. So now we can view the page in the browser instead of just viewing the raw SVG. All right, so everything is exactly the same as it was before but we're now viewing the HTML page instead of the SVG file directly. So let's just get rid of that one, and we can get rid of that now that we've got the file. So one thing we can do with SVG is to style it using CSS, and we can do that just by adding a style element to the head of the HTML page. It can also be added directly to the SVG, but for now we'll just add it to the, the head of the page. And we do this in exactly the same way as if we were styling HTML. So now that we've got some CSS styling, we can remove this fill attribute here. And let's go back to the browser now. And we find that we've got some nice hover effects. So notice how the hotspot areas of the image are automatically scoped to the three shapes of the map without any special code or tricks. And it's much better than the pain to make old school style HTML image maps that you may know and fear from days of yesteryear. So we can take things even further by adding some clipped images into the three different shapes. So we can do this in a vector program or directly in the code. Let's do it directly in the code today. All we need to do is wrap each of the paths in a clip path element, and we can then add the three images. So I've already got three images ready to use. Um, I've just put them on my desktop. There's a town called Nelson, a wonderful place called Lake Louise, and a picture of a farm in Saskatchewan. So let's just drag these into our working folder and then we can go back to the code. So we're gonna be working with clipping masks or clipping paths. And what we want to do is add the clip path elements that will represent these. So we can do these inside the links and we use the clip path element and we'll just give it an ID. So the first one is Alberta, the first one in the code I mean. And then inside the clip path element, what we want to do is copy in the, the path. So we'll put that inside the clip path and then we can add the image itself. We'll do that using the image element. And this uses Xlink as well because it uses the href attributes in the same way that the links do. And now so that the image is used as a clipping mask, what we want to do is use the clip path attribute this time to link to the clipping path that we've just added. So we use the clip path attribute this time, not the clip path element. The clip path element actually defines the clipping path and the clip path attribute links to the clipping path that we've just defined. So we link to it using a URL and we just specify the ID of the clip path that we want to link to. We do that using an ID selector. We also need to add width and height attributes, and we can also add X and Y attributes for positioning. All right, so now we need to wrap the other paths in clip paths as well. So again, we'll do this inside the links. Just update the ID so that it's a bit friendlier. So now let's add the image. And we need to add width and height again. And onto the last one now. And one thing that I forgot to do is to add the clip path attribute. So this is the Saskatchewan one image, so we need to just link to that, which is given the ID SA, and I forgot to do it for this one as well, so let's just add it. So let's go back to our browser now and just see what effect that has, and you can see that there are images now in each of the three shapes, and they're masked or clipped to the shape. 
So they don't look that great at the moment. So we can play around with the positioning and the scaling. So let's just try decreasing the width. And as you can see, that's zoomed it out slightly. So let's try playing around with the positioning now. And we'll just see if we can just make that look a bit nicer. So it's just a case of playing around with these figures until the part of the image that we actually want to look at is visible. I'll let you play around with these and move these into whatever position you would like them to be in. Let's not get sidetracked here. So let's add some accessibility attributes as well to the code now. So we can add uh, some titles and access key attributes to the links, and we can add role and title attributes to the images. So let's start with the links. So we'll give them a title first of all, and then we can add an access key. We use A for Alberta. We can also add a title to the image as well and a role attribute. And down onto the next one now. Use B for the access key for British Columbia. Makes sense to me. Okay, so let's go back to the page now. So we should find now that when we, for example, hover over one of these, we get the title. Great. So just to finish things off, let's add an opacity animation to the hover on the images. So we can do that once again with CSS in the style element in the head of the page. So let's go back to the code, back up to the style element up here. Okay, sweet. So this now brings us to the end of the tutorial. I hope you've had fun and have learned a little about the capabilities of SVG. Thanks for watching.